Um, hi again. Uh, so today we'll be looking at uh, learning unit number 12, which is uh, impulse and momentum. So um, here I've just got uh, the, the plan for today. Uh, it's a short section. So we will start with the uh, impulse uh, momentum theorem. But before we do that, uh, it would be nice to define what is uh, impulse and what is momentum. And then we'll use that theorem uh, or derive it. And then uh, we'll look at the principle of conservation of linear momentum. And then after that, we'll just study collisions both in one and two dimensions. And then we'll go straight to um, yeah. So some questions from the study guide. OK, so from the study guide, this is on pages. Uh, 53, 54, and 55. So page 53, 54, and 55. OK, so this is learning unit 12. OK, so what are we studying? Um, as I've said already, uh, it's impulse and momentum. OK. So what is momentum? So uh, we will study what is called linear momentum. There's um, angular momentum as well, so uh, which we don't study. So uh, momentum. So by definition, linear momentum, actually we use P. So the symbol P, it's a vector. So we need the arrow on top. It's just uh, the mass times the velocity. So that's the definition. We have already studied velocity, and we know velocity is a vector. Momentum is just velocity multiplied by mass, and it's measured in kilograms. So that's the mass unit, and then meters per second. OK, uh, so that's the unit for linear momentum. So what is this thing? So remember that uh, if you've got a block, and it's moving, say, uh, in that direction, uh, with some speed v, the speed was something like 20 meters per second. So that's how fast the thing was moving. Um, now, with momentum, um, so we just need to multiply the speed by m, where m is the mass of the object. And now this vector becomes momentum. OK, so that's uh, how momentum is. And of course, you wouldn't say. 20 meters per second, maybe the mass is 5. So we multiply uh, the 5 by 20 so that the new, <coughs> sorry, the new vector is um, 100 kilograms times meters per second. OK, so that's uh, the definition of momentum. And you can see that um, even though I did not state it, momentum is in the same direction as velocity. OK, so um, of course, uh, momentum is a vector. So in this case, we need to add the fact that this is east, according to this diagram. So your momentum would be 100 kilograms meters per second uh, east. OK, so and then um, before, uh, so by, by definition, impulse uh, is given by the force acting on an object times the time at which, so how much time uh, the force is in on, uh, contact with an object. So these are mainly uh, forces to stop an object from moving or um, to accelerate an object. So for example, if you have a tennis ball and it goes and it bounces, so it falls free fall, bounces off a surface. So say this is H1. And after bouncing, say it reaches a new height, H2, which is then uh, when the tennis ball was in contact, it experienced a force from the floor. And it would take some time T to lose contact with the floor. So then the momentum or the impulse, sorry, um, is the F times T. OK, um, so from Newton's second law, we have learned um, that uh, F is equal to MA. So if F is equal to MA, 
what do we know? We know that acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. So now, if I group, uh, okay, uh, so rate of change in velocity, if I now group the mass with the velocity, uh, that's our definition of momentum, right? So I can just write F is equals to, because this is a change, I must also have a change, and then MV is just momentum. So then it's change in momentum over change in time, which is equal to the force. And uh, you can see from here that the change in momentum will then be equal to the force times the change in time. Okay, so um, we called this thing impulse and delta P is nothing but momentum. So this is known as the impulse momentum theorem. So this is the impulse momentum theorem. Okay, it tells us that change in momentum is equal to or is due to the change uh, the applied force times the time at which the object is in contact with the, um, the surface in that case or uh, with the force. Okay, so uh, that's the impulse momentum theorem. So if I can just show you the summary. So the summary, um, we said linear momentum is uh, P and it's a vector, so it has an arrow. And we said P is equals to mass times velocity. So it's velocity multiplied by mass. We know velocity is a vector and the unit is um, kilogram meters per second. And you can see that there's no negative sign in front of uh, the equation. So uh, momentum is in the same direction as velocity. And then from Newton's second law, we know that uh, the applied force or the net force is the mass times acceleration but acceleration is change in velocity over time. But uh, we, we just said now that MV is momentum. So MV would be momentum, but we are studying a change. So then this would be change in momentum over change in time. If you multiply by the delta T, you get delta P is F times delta T. And this is the definition of impulse. And this side is the momentum, so we call this equation, the impulse momentum theorem. And notice that there are two units uh, uh, of measurement that we have. So either Newton times second, or you use kilogram meter per second. Both of them are correct. So the Newton second comes from the force times the time, and the kilogram meter per second comes from the momentum side. Okay, so um, in our plan, we have just uh, covered section 7.1. So now we are interested in uh, the principle of conservation of linear momentum. And um, let's look at that. So we need a new page. So now we are studying um, the principle of conservation. of linear momentum. Okay, so what does this principle tell us? It tells us that uh, momentum, so for an isolated system, the total momentum is constant. Okay, so uh, it's sometimes they use the word conserved. It's the same as constant, okay? So that means uh, if I have momentum at some time T1, 
later on at some time t2 so the momentum before was just p after some time I must still have p so the momentum doesn't change okay even though the time uh, changed so that's the conservation of momentum but how do we write the equation so we say momentum before so I'll use a small b as a subscript equals the momentum after and this is a general rule so it's always true okay um, so how do we use this equation uh, if say for example you've got two particles the momentum before is the momentum of particle 1 which is the mass times velocity of particle 1 plus um, the momentum of particle 2 so uh, the mass times the velocity of particle 2 and after um, it will be the momentum of particle 1 velocity of particle 1 later on I'm gonna use a prime uh, just to differentiate this speed I mean this velocity from that and then the momentum of particle 2 times um, the velocity, I mean the mass of particle 2 times the velocity of particle 2. So that's how you would use um, the conservation of momentum. And that's this equation. Okay. Um, so remember that vectors in general um, have an x and a y component. So that would be uh, the x component and that would be the y component so for the vector v um, so then um, so let's call this vx and let's call that vy so if v um, can be broken down into y and x and we have uh, conservation of momentum so then we learn that we have momentum in both uh, the x and the y being conserved so we have p before in the x direction must equal the momentum after in the x direction and then momentum before in the y direction must equal momentum after in the y direction so um, what I've just written here is still conservation of momentum but now it's in two dimensions okay uh, this here was in one dimension okay so um, uh, now that we have the conservation of momentum um, now let's uh, have an example so an example would be something like say you are playing a uh, pool with your friends so remember that pool has uh, six holes so one two three uh, four five six okay so there's a line where you can't uh, so where you place your white ball say that's your white ball and then over here you've got another ball uh, say it's the black ball uh, you're playing against your friend and you're trying to score the black ball so initially the black ball is stationary so it's not moving what that means is the speed v naught of the black ball is equals to zero the white ball now you hit the white ball towards the black ball and you want say you want to score the black ball in this hole so you've bet with your friends that you are good enough and you can cut this ball so that it goes there so before uh, the speed of the white ball is v naught and as a velocity I need an arrow so uh, say uh, that's the case and then if we are told that after hitting the ball so remember uh, actually uh, let's let's draw a bigger table okay so so after playing what you find so there's our six holes there's our line that we can cross after playing uh, this was the original direction of motion for the white ball the black ball does indeed uh, I drew it as blue so let's be consistent so if the black ball now 
does actually go in but unfortunately for your friend um, the white ball also goes in so if this angle here is 45 degrees and this one is 45 degrees um, with respect to the original direction of motion the question then is uh, what is the total um, speed so what is the speed v2 so let's call this white ball 2 the black ball 1 so that's 1 that's 2 and um, we want to know also what is v1 okay so let's assume so you are told that the mass of the white ball is m and the mass of the black ball is m so both have masses m so then how do we study this collision um, remember uh, that we have conservation of momentum in the x direction and in the y direction okay but now which way is the x direction and which way is the y uh, direction that is up to us and my advice to you is when you study problems like this always choose um, the direction of motion initially as your x axis okay so um, if our x axis is over here so that's x then y has to be perpendicular so that's y so even here uh, that's x and that is y so now uh, momentum before in the x direction equals momentum after actually it's smarter to start with the y in this case um, you will see shortly why so momentum before in the y direction equals momentum after in the y direction okay so why did I say it's uh, easier to start with the y because initially we don't have any y momenta and afterwards we only have um, y momenta opposing each other okay whereas initially here we have x momenta and after we have y momenta so there's three terms here there's two terms there so it's easier to work with this one momentum before is the mass of ball one which is m that's the black ball and the speed is zero so uh, it's just zero um, and then plus for the white ball it's m and then the speed or the velocity is v naught so times v naught okay equals uh, m and then now um, the final speed is v1 so just to remind you it's over here so v1 for the ball plus m times v2 for the white ball okay so this term is just zero and then here we still have m now we need to um, substitute the vectors so v naught is going in the positive x direction initially so it's just plus uh, v naught okay the plus is the direction the v naught is the magnitude so that's the momentum before uh, this is equal to m and remember that here we are looking at the x so uh, that's the x component that's the x component that's the x component the x component of v1 is over here so that's the x component of v1 and that's at an angle of uh, 45 degrees it's the cos of 45 so then I'll have plus because it's going towards the positive x direction it's plus v1 um, wait we're looking at y so guys uh, that's y that's y that's y so it's actually going up so plus v1 and then it's going to be sine 45 okay so um, just make sure uh, we are looking at the y uh, conservation of momentum component so then we uh, for ball one it's going up and we said uh, up is positive for y so that's why I have a plus there and then plus this plus is this plus over here then I've got the mass of the white ball and multiplied by now the y component is pointed down which is opposite to the positive so that's negative um, v2 and it's also sine 45 
Okay, so um, now uh, we can, uh, okay, uh, so we were looking at the y, so this term over here um, uh, should be zero because uh, we don't have a y component for the initial speed. The initial speed is only in the x direction, so that term shouldn't be there, it should be zero. Okay, so my mistake, apologies. So this term is just zero because we are looking at y. So what we learn is zero is equals to this term plus this term. Okay, so now I'm going to take the negative term to the other side so that it becomes positive. Then it becomes m v2 sine 45 equals m v1 sine 45. Okay. And then now you can see that the m's cancel, the sine 45 cancels. So we learn that v1 equals v2. So that's our first equation. Okay, and then to get the second equation, we use conservation of momentum in the x uh, axis, uh, in the x direction. So momentum before in the x equals momentum after in the x before uh, it's the uh, for for pole number one it's stationary so the momentum before is zero it's not moving and then for ball number two it's the m times v naught and it's a positive because it's going towards the positive x axis so it's plus m uh, v naught after um, for ball number one which is the black ball uh, it's positive so it's m then the speed is positive v, remember it's v1, so v1, now it's cos 45 degrees, okay, and then plus for the second ball, the mass is m, and the speed is also positive in the positive direction, so it's plus v2, and uh, it's also cos 45, okay, so um, if you check the cancel, Remember that V1 is V2, so substitute V1 over there. What we learn is on the left-hand side, we just have V0 over here uh, equals, and then here it's V1, and then this is also V1. So it's the same term twice, so I just get twice V1 times cos 45. So in the end, our solution is V1 is equals to, so I have to divide by 2 and the cos 45. Cos 45 is square root 2 over 2. So uh, this 2 cancels that 2, so I'm just left with square root 2. Um, so V1 is equals to, I have to divide by square root 2. It's just 1 over square root 2 times V0. Okay, so that's our final solution. So V1 is um, 1 over square root 2 times V0, and most of the cases V0 is given, but we said V1 is V2, so which is equals to V2. So we have both V1 and V2, and that solves our problem. So how would you quote the final answer? So remember that V1 is a vector, so it will have the magnitude 1 over root 2 times whatever V0 is. Maybe V0 is 10 meters per second, then you substitute 10 meters per second here. And then the direction, uh, if you check at your diagram, it's according to this diagram, it's 45 degrees north. So remember this is east, that's north. So north of east. Okay, so that is how uh, we solve uh, problems for two dimensions. Okay, so... Um, we are actually um, done with uh, uh, the material. We started off and we defined impulse, and we said impulse is force times, uh, so it's applied force to change momentum multiplied by T. Then we said momentum is M times V, and we had a momentum uh, impulse theorem, which is over here. So that was delta P is F delta T, and we said that's the units 
that we use and it came from Newton's second law and then after that we studied the principle of conservation of linear momentum which tells us that if we have an isolated system the momentum before equals the momentum after. Um, you might be wondering what is an isolated system and when is this true or false? So for example if I have a ball floating in space that's an isolated system. If I have two balls moving in space that's also an isolated system. If I have a block on a surface, the isolated system, so the block is moving in some direction, is the whole system. So isolated system in this case would be the block plus the floor. Okay, so if there's friction on the floor, the block will lose some energy to the floor and we, uh, we have studied this, this is work done. The floor will then heat up, so that means the energy was transferred from the block uh, to the floor. So as a system combined, the block and uh, the floor would be an isolated system. Whereas the block alone is not an isolated system. Okay, so the block alone is not an isolated system. So that's what I mean by isolated. Um, and then um, we studied uh, collisions in one dimension and we studied collisions in two dimensions and here we used an example of um, the pool table, someone playing the, the black ball. And then there's uh, two more things that we need to, uh, to discuss which uh, are part of uh, the syllabus. So those two more things uh, are the following. So there is something called an elastic collision and we have an inelastic collision. Okay, elastic collision, all this means is the following. It means the following two things are true. So elastic collision, the kinetic energy is conserved. So kinetic energy before equals kinetic energy after. So, and uh, this will depend on the number of particles, but in most cases you would have two. So if you have two particles, the kinetic energy before is one half, the mass of particle one, multiplied by the initial speed of particle one, squared, plus one half the mass of particle two, the initial speed of particle two squared, and we said this is equal to the kinetic energy after, which is one half uh, the mass of particle one times the speed of particle two, so that's the final, uh, particle one squared, that's the final, plus one half mass of particle two, times the speed of particle two squared. Okay, so that's the first thing that you have in an elastic collision. We have the fact that kinetic energy is conserved. Okay, and of course, so that's the condition for um, an elastic collision. Of course, we said conservation of momentum is always true, so we'll just add the fact that momentum before equals momentum after. So here we have m1, the initial speed of, I mean the initial velocity of particle one plus mass two initial uh, velocity of particle two equals, uh, that's the initial, so equals m2 final of uh, number two plus the mass m1 uh, times the final uh, velocity of particle one. So using these two uh, in conjunction, you can then solve uh, the two equations simultaneously um, to, to find the final speeds V1 and V2. Okay, so that's an elastic collision. And then what is an inelastic collision? Inelastic collision means uh, the two particles move together after colliding. OK, 
Okay, so assume we had a strange uh, pool uh, game or table. That would mean in our example that we did earlier, you have the white ball, there is the black ball. It hits, so the white ball hits the black ball. And then afterwards what you have is both the white and the black move together uh, to whatever hole you have. So here, <laughs> of course, you would win by not scoring. Because if you score the black ball and the white ball, you lose. So your aim here would not to would be not to score. Okay. So um, uh, the other thing uh, is that remember that we said for elastic, the kinetic energy was conserved. So here, obviously, the kinetic energy is not conserved. So E k before is not equals to E k after. Okay, so how do we do calculations here? So before, remember mo momentum is always conserved. So momentum before is momentum after. So before, uh, say that's M1, that's M2. Then here, they are moving together. So you'll have mass 1 plus mass 2. So what you learn, um, actually this diagram is wrong. It should be moving in the x direction to conserve the y um, momentum because before there was no y momentum um, but it's just for um, uh, the purpose of showing you how it moves so here we will have the mass 1 times the initial velocity of particle 1 plus mass 2 times the initial velocity of particle 2 this is equal to remember afterwards they stick together so that means the total mass m1 plus m2 will then have a speed v. Okay, so uh, that's the key. The key is afterwards uh, these two would then move together. Okay, so now um, we have completed uh, the section. Uh, now we want to study um, some examples. Okay, so the examples I'm going to look at are from the study guide. So if you can now go to page 54. Okay, so page 54 of your study guide. Um, in particular, uh, we're going to start with question one. So question one is, um, I'm looking at the tutorial questions. Um, so can a single object have kinetic energy by but no momentum? Explain your answer. Okay, so how do we answer a question like this? Uh, so we are looking at page 54, uh, the tutorial problems. So these are tutorials. And now we are looking at number one. Okay, so number one is asking, can a single object have kinetic energy but no momentum? So if I have one particle, can it have kinetic energy but no momentum? So momentum is zero. How did we define momentum? We said momentum equals mass times velocity. Kinetic energy was one half m v squared. So v is the speed of uh, uh, the, the ball. So if the ball has speed v, that means it has velocity v, which means uh, if I multiply the velocity, it has, um, okay. So if I multiply the velocity by m, that means it has momentum. So the answer is no. It can't have uh, kinetic energy and no momentum. Okay, so kinet having kinetic energy implies that implies that you have momentum. Okay, because both depend, so kinetic energy depends on speed, momentum is velocity. So having speed means you have velocity, which means you have momentum. So this is implied. Okay, so that's number one. And then now let's look at number two. So same page, number two. Uh, ooh. Okay, so I should have swapped. Um, so just to, to remind you, uh, so we said uh, if an object has kinetic energy, it means it has speed. Um, what that means is if it has speed, it has half mv squared, but having speed implies you have uh, velocity. Having velocity, uh, if I just multiply by the mass, 
now I have momentum. So um, you can't have an object having kinetic energy and zero momentum. Uh, so having kinetic energy implies you have momentum because kinetic energy depends on speed and momentum depends on velocity. So having speed, you have velocity, which means you have momentum. Okay, so that's number one. And then now number two. So let's read the uh, number two. So number two says, can a system of two or more objects have a total kinetic energy that is non-zero, but a total momentum that is zero? And explain your answer. Okay, so here 